late. Um, I'm going to be the timekeeper again, as discussed um, at the previous board meeting. We're going to try and stick to this time, so please be concise and then uh, save your questions for uh, in the end, and then use the the questions box in a go to webinar for asking questions. I think that would be great. Um, other than that, the agenda is uh, in the board packet. We're going to do an operational update as usual, and then quick updates from the different board committees. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about DrupalCon Latin America, uh, an update on the elections, and um, quarterly working group updates. I believe that is it. Um, and then um, we're going to have a, an ex ex executive session as well. Um, I don't know if we did a roll call to see if everybody's here. Yeah, we we did a rolling roll call. I think uh, Elise, did you feel like you got everyone? Yeah. And you just joined, so yeah, I think everybody's got it. Right. I think we're good. All right. All right. Then we're good to go. It's all yours, Holly. Thanks. Well, hello again, everyone. I literally feel like every month we just did this, but we're glad to be back. Uh, so in this month's uh, board meeting, we're reviewing the month of February here. So I just have some updates to share with. Um, you guys, uh, unless you got us, thank you. She's allergic to the half hour time zone. <laughs> um, so, so some new news, uh, this is not actually February news, but uh, just to let everyone know, we did have uh, three new folks uh, start with us on Monday morning. Um, they've all been coming back, so we're really thrilled about that. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, so uh, Brad Fields has joined the marketing team uh, as a content manager, so he's working really closely with Phil Boulevard and um, and uh, Joe on our you know content strategy uh, for Drupal marketing. Uh, Tina Cross uh, joined us. She is our DrupalCon coordinator, so the DrupalCon team is now whole and functioning again. Um, and not that they weren't functioning. Okay. Right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> want to rephrase? Uh, let me walk that back. Okay. <laughs> They are soon to be at Wait, 100%. Quick question. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Um, is um, Jeff Walpole on the call or not? No. No? Okay. He's, he's texting me that he's having trouble to join. So anyway, okay. keep going. I'll help him debug. Thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, so Tina Cross has joined us. Um, and then uh, Matt Sagawa uh, has joined us as our chief financial officer. Um, and that is an exciting new role at the organization. Uh, Brad's role is also new. <laughs> Um, you know, hope, hoping to help us uh, push our um, financial uh, reporting um, into the future, help us have better tools for forecasting and uh, and, and being more forward oriented, um, and also uh, overseeing the HR function under his CFO role. So three new folks here, um, and that is definitely taking up a lot of time this week, but let me go ahead and get back into February mm -hmm. mode. Uh, lots of great community stuff in February. So we held three Meet the Candidate sessions for Drupal elections in the month of February. We had over 100 people across those three different calls, uh, which is really fantastic, with lots of questions from the community. Um, and I just want to underscore, it's been so great to have so many folks in the community engaged in the process, both as candidates and as participants. Um, uh, in, in terms of uh, you know being on the call and asking great questions of the candidates um, and the folks that are helping to promote elections over Twitter, et cetera. Um, it's been really great, and we'll say a little bit more about that later. Um, we also held a DrupalCon last month in Bogota, Colombia, so DrupalCon Latin America. And we'll have an update on that later, but um, I just want to point out that it was such a great bump in the community participation from Latin America coming out of that con, so we hope that we see lots more of that going forward. Um, and um, Drupal Jobs, just another highlight, had its best, best month yet in February. We had 118 posts on the site, $12,450 of revenue. Um, and we were able to roll out two new features in February. Um, you can now get an email subscription to new jobs, um, and you can get them as an RSS feed. So that really helps the job seekers, um, you know, find uh, find the right thing or know when jobs that relate to them come come onto the site. So so that is good. Um, one other note about February is that we are looking to um, push our metrics reporting into a new place um, and make it more usable. So uh, 
we have begun using a tool called uh, Simple KPI. Um, we're building out dashboards around all of our programs so that um, you can see those metrics at any given time. Um, we'll make these publicly available in the end when we feel like we've got the right mix of things. Uh, this month, Drupal.org got all of their data in and we'll be rolling it out across the programs. So in the future, the board packets will not contain every single metric every month. Uh, we'll have these dashboards that you can reference separately, and we'll use the board packets to raise issues that we need to talk about. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So that's the plan with that. Just wanted to point it out. A um, couple of other quick updates. Um, on the DrupalCon side, um, we'll get more on Latin America, like I said, later. Uh, LA uh, is in full swing, um, and this week, uh, Amanda Gonzer on the con team is getting out the messages to folks whose sessions were accepted and then sessions that were politely declined uh, as well are going out and we'll have all the sessions up on the site next week, which is always an exciting week in DrupalCon history. Um, also, Early Bird ends next Friday, 27 March. So uh, that's a big uh, time for us in ticketing. We see a big percentage of overall con tickets happen in that week and in particularly on the last day, which is I think a great explanation of human like behavior. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so that's gonna be a really big week for us. It's been very tough to gauge where we are <laughs> at in ticket sales so far because um, the con site launched later than we launched uh, DrupalCon Austin, for example. But after we get through the early bird date, we'll sort of have a more apples to apples look um, and, and know where we're at. Uh, one other quick note about LA is just um, one of the things that you know that we do is provide um, blocks of rooms at hotels at a discounted rate for folks that are attending the Drupal cons. And I just want to point out that it's important for folks to stay at those hotels <laughs> because um, it is part of how we get a deal with the convention center and the other resources that we use. And all of our pricing is tied together around those. Um, and not staying at those venues does have, um, could have financial consequences for the, for the show. Um, again, early bird week is next week. We think that a lot of um, pickup at the hotels will happen around that same time as well. But uh, just we've noticed more and more big blocks of rooms going to other hotels, um, particularly like sponsors and whatnot. And I just want to encourage everyone to really look at the hotels we're staying at. Um, even if you want to arrange your own block, uh, we would love to work with you to help arrange the right pricing for that block. Uh, if you're staying in the venue, we can get credit for that. Um, and that's really that's really important to us. So I just want to say those words out loud. Hi. Just a question on that. Um, I haven't looked this time, but quite often the um, official hotels are really pricey. Do we do we work to put budget options in the mix? We do. Yeah, we have a, one that actually has a fair amount of availability right now that's aimed at more the budget traveler or the student um, budget level. And so there are rooms for about $120 to $130 a night, which is super competitive for Los Angeles. Right. It's still, it's still a lot. But yeah, cool. Thanks. Yeah. So we do try to provide a mix of hotels, um, you know, uh, in terms of pricing and amenities and all that good stuff. A um, couple quick things on Drupal.org. Um, just to let you know, there's a big step forward on the first area of the roadmap, which is um, streamlined account creation. Um, or use, uh, sorry, organ use, uh, yeah, streamlined account creation. Um, so there were, there were lots of improvements to account creation process in February that were rolled out. Um, we think we've got a good process now that is use, more useful to the user, um, also is going to get us better data about that user, um, and is also going to keep the robots out. Sorry, robots. Um, we also added newsletter signups as part of the process now, and so that's great. We're starting to integrate more of those communication channels with uh, our you know, community of on Drupal.org. In fact, this Thursday, we will send out the first issue of the newly revised Drupal newsletter that has not been sent in like six years. Wow. Um, yeah, and, and we're really excited. We have a great partnership with uh, Bob Kepford, um, and we're uh, working with him in um, basically, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Syndicating. Syndicating, yes, uh, the Drupal, um, uh, the <clears throat> weekly drop content there. So we're really excited about that. 
Um, we also got issue comment attribution launched. Um, that actually that actually happened in March, but I'm sneaking it in because I want to say it out loud. Um, <laughs> we did a lot of work on it in February, and it launched. Uh, it launched in March, um, and uh, we've definitely been watching folks and, and how they're using that um, at this point. So. Um, right now, uh, people have been actually going back in time and applying attribution to comments from the past as well, which has been interesting to see them do that. Uh, but uh, according to a data poll this morning, we've had 47 employers attributed over 1,000, about 1,900, sorry, 1,098 times. Wow. So <clears throat> it's starting to go. Um, is that for core or is that for contrib as well? It's for all projects. Yes. All issues. All issues, all projects right now. Yeah. And do we know if that's in uh, for D7? Can you can we look at it that way? D7, D8. <clears throat> we could if we did some um, additional querying specific to um, the category of the issue. So th there's some there's some um, specificity we could add there. That would be great. I know a lot of the attribution in the first couple days was actually in the issues that were related to adding the feature. So <laughs> I, I would say, you know, a good chunk of them are all around that. Um, right now, Drupal Association is in third place overall. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> We've been attributing a lot. Mm -hmm. well, that's funny. Um, good. Uh, and then just uh, some random bits from around the organization as well, just um, on the D8 marketing side, things have been, people have been, we've still been very focused on um, highlighting what can be done to help um, Drupal 8 get to completion. Um, Jess's, uh, Jess Mirbo's uh, graph from her blog post a few weeks ago has been really helpful, and that message has been very popular with folks, so that's great. Um, on the revenue side, we launched uh, the Perfect Audience audience, audience extension product on Drupal.org um, in the month of February. Um, and we are prepping to launch a Try Drupal program, um, which will be a great advertising platform for hosting companies. Uh, but also, uh, and you know, this is where we love these programs, these revenue <laughs> programs that um, help contribute to funding, but also um, help drive the projects forward. Uh, this should also be a place where we can actually help drive Drupal adoption as well. So we're really excited to get that launched uh, shortly. Uh, should see that in the month of April. We're running just a time check that we're um, officially almost out of time for this section. Totally perfect. So I just closed my notebook. I'm no more worth right. today. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Any questions? No? All right. Let's move on to the um, board committee. Great. So let's start with the revenue uh, committee. And I need to just open up Megan's microphone. So give me one second to do that. Okay. <laughs> Megan. Hi, right. can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Okay, well, I can make this short. And uh, the Revenue Committee did not meet in February, but we did uh, put out a um, just an update that I can share with everyone. Um, there's just some really great highlights that the D8 Accelerate fundraising campaign um, First phase of that kicked off thanks to the board members for being anchor partners and for the others that joined this initiative. And I'm sure there'll be more about this coming soon, but it's really exciting. And also our co-marketing event, um, we're going to have two this fall in Europe. Uh, sponsors are going to be uh, coming with the Drupal Association to two um, events to market Drupal um, and uh, we started sponsorship sales for that, and we've gotten some really strong pickup, and uh, really excited for that. So you'll be seeing us at uh, De Mexico and Germany, and Festival of Marketing in the UK. So we'll have some more uh, updates on that initiative in general. But so far, it's looking really great. And um, Megan, what were the what were those two events in Europe? De Mexico and Festival of Marketing. New Mexico. D M sorry, I, think I have a little cold. So D M E X C O. I think I got that oh, one right. M E X C O. That's all right. I'll get it later. Sorry. Okay. Okay. And um, and then also we're just keeping an eye on uh, 
Well, right now, as we focus on DrupalCon LA ticket sales and sponsorship, we're also keeping an eye in the on the Drupal jobs in the supporter program. That was just a little soft in February, but we've been working with our new um, uh, lead generation role, which has been filled by uh, Phil Bulbar, and uh, looking to see what we can do to really increase um, our pipeline there and, and get that back on track. But other than that, things are looking really good, and we're excited to work with our new CFO, Matt, where we're going to be modeling our revenue growth, and really excited to have his expertise and staff and to uh, start working with them. Thank you, uh, Megan. Uh, governance? Is, is Matt on the call? He was. Yes, not. Have you uh, have you have you enabled this mic? Yep. Uh, maybe it's this mic. No, I, well, I did okay. enable this mic. Okay. Well, let let's move on to um, finance and then maybe circle back to Matthew. Maybe it's, maybe it's online. Finance committee met last Friday to review the January and February financials. Um, uh, nothing major to report. There's some work that needs to be done that continues um, with respect to getting a uh, merchant account in Europe um, for us uh, directly. There have been some delays on that, but nothing that should um, you know, impact our ability to do uh, the next European DrupalCon. There's contingency plans in place. Also of note, um, the, Feb the, the, the uh, DA team was able to close the um, February financials um, on time, which was awesome. It's, it's a huge improvement, and so big thanks to Chris and Leslie and Elise and Holly for, for doing that. So we reviewed January and February. Um, no big concerns. It was our last meeting without Matt, so we're really excited to have him, have him uh, join us on the Finance Committee, too. Awesome. Um, I'll go next as the um, executive uh, committee. Uh, so we have been working on uh, Holly's performance review, and Holly has also been working on hers. Um, I think we're pretty close to wrap that up, but we have to do a little bit more work and then deliver the performance review. Um, let's go, th and that's it for the executive committee. Um, let's move to marketing and then see if Matthew is online for governance. Uh, sorry, uh, we were just looking no at Gina, but Joe, we'll go ahead and give the update. Yeah, uh, I spoke with Gina uh, two days ago. I know that she uh, has been working on rounding up the committee and actually finalizing the members. She has done that, so she has a committee. Uh, and I believe she also has a, uh, a date set now for the first meeting. I'm not exactly sure when that is, but I'll, I'll find out. But uh, now that she actually has a committee formed and uh, a meeting scheduled, she's going to formulate her... Uh, plan along with the committee, and then and then we'll start to execute. Thank you. And then um, I don't know if we were able to unmike or locate Matthew, but I, oh wait, oh he must have rejoined. Okay, hang on, I'm unmuting him. Hopefully, Matthew, you want to try one more time? Mm, we must be having technical difficulties. I, I will say on his behalf that he did send an email out today to follow up from an item we've been talking about for a while. So if you want to check your email and respond, that would be awesome. It just, uh, it just I am me saying is muted. So I don't yeah. know. I, I opened his microphone, but it's just um, then, then his mic disappeared. So it looks like we're just having some tech difficulties. Right. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, he did send out an email. Uh, take a look at the document. What? That's Samir. That was Samir. Oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Could not hear. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if we have enough time to actually look at the document and vote on it. Oh, I think we said that we would we could handle that um, offline because we discussed it publicly and then we figured we could wrap it up via email. Okay, that works. Any other questions on any of the committee's updates? Mm, no, 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 no. 
Was that a question, Samir? Wasn't sure. Sorry, you're you're cutting in and out a little bit, um, at least for me. Um, did it, did no, it sound that like a bit from the governance committee? Uh, all right, thank you. All right, well then, let's move on to the uh, DrupalCon Latin America wrap. It's a 15-minute presentation. Awesome, uh, Rachel. Yeah. And, and are you actually going to wrap it? I am. I'm going to freestyle wrap it. <laughs> Good. It's getting towards the end of the day. I need some entertainment. Are right. going to be like Cypress Hill and Salt and Peppa? Mm, salt and Peppa. Okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. You're already not wrapping. Um, so we had DrupalCon Latin America in February this past uh, month. And just okay, so uh, this is kind of the agenda of what we'll run down, their goals and KPIs, the attendance, uh, financial information, the content of the, the conference, some feedback we got, and then uh, summarizing everything and moving, moving into the future. Um, so going, our goals obviously for DrupalCons are to grow and strengthen the community, accelerate the project, promote Drupal as a marketing and market it as a platform, um, and generate funds uh, to to uh, further community program work. Um, so here are our KPIs related to DrupalCon Latin America. Um, in the center column, you'll see what our goal was, and in the right, I put in what our actuals were. Um, we obviously came in a little bit under as far as attendance goes, but we were able to renegotiate some contracts and some purchase orders and uh, kept our expenses uh, in line with what our, um, our new attendance was. And so uh, we were ma we managed to come in um, under our net revenue goal of negative ninety nine thousand dollars. We came in at negative eighty three thousand dollars. So that was a, a great surprise once we balanced all the uh, books at the end of the month. Uh, go ahead. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and so let's talk about who showed up. We had two hundred and sixty three people attend, which was great. Uh, we had pretty much uh, one third of the people in that photograph. Uh, had registered before two weeks uh, out from the event and about two-thirds registered in the last two weeks leading up to the event. So as an event organizer, that was not stressful at all. <laughs> um, go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, we basically saw a similar breakdown as to what we see in other um, conferences as far as uh, where people are coming from their job function. We saw a lot of developers, but we did see a nice slice of our other um, job types. Uh, fantastically, 48% were Drupal Association me members, which is a really great number for us. So we were excited about that. Uh, we had higher than uh, our we had higher than Amsterdam percentage of uh, female attendees, but a little bit lower than Austin. So kind of split the difference there, right in the middle. Amsterdam is usually what, like uh, Amsterdam was 11. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but still above what the industry trends are for tech conferences. So that's good. <clears throat> Uh, people were kind of across the board as far as their skill level, um, although, again, it really closely mirrors what we see at other conferences, so that was kind of another great way to reiterate that this was very much like any other conference. It was just on a, in a different location and a different scale. Uh, so we have uh, people using Drupal in a variety of ways. Uh, we had quite a few Drupal shops uh, show up, which was really kind of cool. Uh, I know that it was a great place for people to kind of connect in uh, not only just Colombian companies, but obviously from companies all throughout the region. So more shops, fewer site owners. It'll be interesting to see if that plays out, that same trend plays out in other countries. Yeah. Um, so less of a, not a real, not an opportunity to be a true marketing event these these cons, if that's the way they trend, right? Yes. Yeah. And we, we did a really good job of representing the region and, and the world. Uh, we had 23 different countries represented in four continents. Uh, we had 12 different Latin American countries, and our most populous uh, attendee country was Colombia, if you can believe it. So we had 90 Colombians there, which was great. Uh, this kind of gives you a little bit of a view of where everybody came from. We had people from as far away as India and uh, South Korea, um, quite a few different countries in Europe, uh, and the U.S. sent quite a few as well. Uh, so the financials. Uh, again, this is kind of breaking, we'll go into each of the different line items, but um, overall we were, uh, oops, 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 okay. 
uh, the income uh, came in a little bit under with our uh, with our lower than what we had projected attendance. But again, we were able to keep those expenses in check and renegotiate contracts uh, so that that didn't uh, run away from us and we didn't end up greater in the hole than, than what we had uh, projected. So overall, things came out pretty great. Uh, we had $41,000 in ticket sales and $62,000 in sponsorship. We exceeded our sponsorship goals. That was wonderful to see people really step up and want to um, engage with the local Latin American community. Uh, and again, oh, so 37% came in the last two weeks. I invers inverted those numbers earlier, but a lot of people <laughs> came in the last couple weeks, just similar to Amsterdam. So it was kind of interesting that our, our last two conferences had both seen massive uh, registration surges in the two weeks leading up to the conference. So, <laughs> so please don't be a portent of the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so here's an accounting of our expenses. So uh, our overhead and staff wages uh, is our top line item. Uh, and then obviously we need to feed people and we need to get our crew uh, to the event. Uh, we had event planning services that uh, helped us with contract negotiation um, and oh, sorry, uh, contract negotiation and uh, venue selection. And then registration materials. So that's things like uh, your program guides, your t-shirts, your um, tote bags, things like that. Um, and then we did offer grants for um, scholarships for uh, speakers who were able to apply for, I think, up to $1,000, I can't remember the exact amount, maybe $600 in um, money to go help them get to the event, which was great. So we had $7,000 allocated for that. And, uh, okay, all and, <laughs> Sorry. Fancy. Uh, okay, and then uh, one of the really great things we did with this con, which we I don't think have done for any other cons, was we offer translation services. So in the um, plenary room, which had sessions throughout the day, we translated the sessions into the two other languages. So if someone was presenting in English, we translated it into Spanish and Portuguese. Um, and so that was great that everyone could experience the keynotes and understand what was going on, and then everybody uh, could come in and, and find a session in their native language in that room. And that was a free service that we provided to the attendees. So that was really well received. Uh, the rest just kind of detail some of the logistics and production things, um, space, Wi-Fi, uh, design for the site, and program guides, things like that. So let's get into the content. Uh, we had some pretty highly attended sessions. Uh, we had four concurrent sessions. Uh, I'll let you just kind of cruise through that list if you're interested to know which were the top ten. This is, this is those. These were they. These are those. These are them. These are them. Uh, the YouTube views. So we we had since we had a smaller than uh, than average turnout overall, we uh, kind of as a direct correlation had a smaller than um, normal turnout for survey evaluations for the sessions. So uh, rather than um, showing what the responses were from those uh, approximately uh, 13 people who <laughs> filled out the surveys, we thought we would show which uh, sessions had been the most popular on YouTube. Um, and so this is kind of the rundown on, on which ones have been uh, most widely viewed. Uh, yeah, and so we had, a, again, about 5% participation on the evaluations. <clears throat> so these are some of the observations that we uh, received as far as uh, sessions and content goes. Uh, the translation services were really um, appreciated. Uh, some of the sessions in the other session rooms were uh, presented in, uh, you know, Spanish or Portuguese, and, and people, uh, we did have, I think, one session where people translated back and forth. They had a friend come up and help them uh, work their way through the presentation. Uh, we, we heard great feedback that the content was just uh, as good a quality as any other DrupalCon, um, and they were excited that the, the con was um, really, you know, delivering that same experience that they felt when they went to ones in uh, North America or in Europe. Uh, we did hear a little feedback that there there was an interest for a few more business uh, focused sessions. So that was interesting, and uh, we were also pretty uh, excited that we had speakers from a variety of countries, and we had a higher than uh, than our attendee ratio level of female speakers. So that was really exciting. Uh, I think the screens were actually one of the most successful aspects of the con. We had a whopping 38.4% of uh, conference goers attend the sprints, which was just wonderful. And if anyone was on site, uh, we had a little bit of a wireless internet issue for the first couple hours of the sprint, but people did a great job of just kind of rallying together, um, you know, working on things that they could uh, offline. 
And once we got that Wi-Fi back up and running uh, throughout the whole building, <laughs> uh, people were just off and running. And it was just a really great turnout uh, and a really fun day. We had to uh, kind of help people leave at the end of the day because we needed to let the hotel staff go home. So it was a, it was a really great day. Uh, we had a lot of feedback uh, that, that people really enjoyed the size of the con, uh, so it was a little bit more of a personal feel. Um, there wasn't quite that overwhelming crush with people all around you, and so it kind of fostered a little bit more of that, um, developing those personal connections with people that maybe they haven't met before or, or hadn't been able to come together quite like this before in Latin America. Uh, so some of the feedback that we got from the surveys, so the top three reasons for people to attend this con were uh, personal networking, uh, the session content, and then there was a tie between business networking and speakers. Uh, the one thing that exceeded expectations was personal networking. And ironically, we had three people say that they were not able to find a job and three people say that they were not able to hire for a job. So I think yeah. you could find those people and connect them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so this kind of breaks down how uh, satisfaction levels uh, came out as far as the various activities related with the, the con. Um, people were pretty satisfied with the communication that we provided. Uh, they really enjoyed the networking and sessions and uh, loved the keynotes. Uh, and the sprints were really uh, something that people, we got a lot of really great feedback about the sprints. Um, the least useful was boffs. Um, I think that that was kind of a something that wasn't um, maybe emphasized in the right way or was something that wasn't, um, promoted enough. Um, so this was some really great feedback that we got. We had zero people say that there was less value than what they expected, and so that was really kind of cool. We had uh, the majority of people say that the value was um, somewhat more or much more than what they anticipated for the ticket price. So that's that's a really great uh, reinforcement that, that it was a great event. So the smallest slice of the pie here is this somewhat yes. less value. Yes, yeah. great. <laughs> Uh, so here's a couple snippets of feedback that we got. Um, for the most part, uh, the feedback was pretty positive. People really loved the keynotes. They loved the size of the con and that they were able to connect with new people. Uh, I think people really appreciated that there were a lot of languages flying around and that it was kind of a fun thing to try and um, connect with people who you were know, two different uh, native language speakers trying to connect with maybe their second languages or third languages. And it was just kind of a fun um, environment. Um, and we heard some feedback from more vegetarian options on the on the food. And astoundingly, uh, we had one of the highest net promoter scores of any con. That I've ever um, seen anywhere. Yeah, so we were really <laughs> excited about that. Um, people loved uh, Dries and Larry's keynotes. Uh, and really enjoyed sprints. Uh, and Tejo was pretty much the unsung hero of DrupalCon Latin America, which is one of the social activities uh, I think on one of the first nights. Uh, and the, the only real kind of critical feedback that we received at this point was that they wanted even more social events. So they, <laughs> oh, they wanted more of it. <laughs> and so that was that was one thing that that uh, they really reiterated. They wanted more parties. I will I will just add the caveat. As much as I would love to say our net promoter score was 80 everywhere, just add the caveat that we had you know a small conference to begin with, which makes your sample size hard, and then an even smaller number of respondents to the survey, right? So, but we're going to take this 80 and put it in really big font anyway. <laughs> All right, so overall we found that uh, Latin America came, they came to the con and showed up, uh, and everybody had a great time. Uh, the keynotes were a great hit, and uh, the sessions were uh, considered to be top quality, and were really appreciated that they were translated into three languages. We had a really uh, remarkable donation by Lingotech. They took, I think, 25 of our sessions and translated them into the other two languages for our YouTube channels. So it makes that reach even further. So people looking for these sessions in English, Portuguese, or Spanish can go online and find those languages in those languages, or excuse me, find those sessions in those languages. Uh, again, sprinters turned out like no other con before. We had such a great turnout for uh, sprints on uh, Thursday. And we did have moments of internet connectivity issues, uh, particularly during the first hour or two of the sprints. Overall, the Royal Park uh, worked really well for our needs. It was a little bit of a fun layout as far as getting from one room to the other, but the, uh, the staff there was really uh, helpful. And I think uh, internally we found lots of learnings that we can take away for our next uh, uh, DrupalCon in an emerging market, uh, things that we can pull in as far as internal planning, but also community engagement and making sure that we are just kind of uh, tightening things up as we continue to grow this program.
the end. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I was there, and uh, I thought it was really well run and executed. So, you know, thanks for all the hard work to put in our first conference in uh, in Latin America. Thanks. It looks like we have um, questions real quick. Uh, yep, yeah, we have a couple of minutes for questions. So, yeah, so no a question from Angie: Should we make last minute prices much higher to encourage earlier registration? Uh, yes, we, we do that a little bit as of now, um, but that's something that we could always um, exploit maybe a little bit more, <laughs> uh, kind of boost that ratio. Right now, we kind of continue the same pricing uh, proportions year to year and from con to con. So that's definitely something that we could we could look into. Yeah, if that trend continues, we're going to yeah want to really incentivize early <laughs> registration. Um, what's the other question? Oh, and the other, Donna has a comment. Oh, having uh, vegetarian food as a default at DrupalCons. I love that idea, Donna. I know that's a really great way to reduce the carbon footprint and um, something we can definitely look at. Uh, the food is always one of the touchiest subjects with, <laughs> with a con. That's something that we hear about, whether people love it or, or prefer something else. Um, but I think that'd be a really cool um, option for us to explore. We could try it on a day, right? Like, try one day. At, probably not LA because we're already there. But I will say for the uh, North American con, one of the most uh, the most popular food comments for special dietary needs is more bacon, so those people may be out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. True story. True story. <laughs> well, that's because bacon actually is a vegetable. Oh, okay. Is we can, <laughs> the thing about like, the, the um, veggie food uh, default is you can actually still have an option of saying, I want meat, but you have meat on the side rather than meat in everything. Yeah, yeah. Was there other questions? That was it. That's it. All right. Awesome. Uh, thank you. It was a great update. Um, so the next section is the uh, an update on the elections. Yeah, and I can probably do this in under five minutes. Uh, but I, I just wanted to remind everyone in this public space that uh, voting for the elections closes on 20 March. So that's this Friday at midnight UTC, which we've discovered is not 4 p.m. anymore, but 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, where we live. Uh, so at 5 p.m. Pacific on Friday, we'll be rolling, uh, turning the voting off. Um, right now, we've got 1,300 votes in the system. Uh, as a reminder, last time we ran elections, we had about 660 votes total. So it's a good turnout, um, but I'm hoping that um, like everything else the Drupal community does, all the voting will happen in the last day, right? Like that we'll get lots more votes is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, but we've been really pleased with the turnout so far and the, the enthusiasm from the community. Um, and just as a reminder for the board, once we turn voting off, um, we will go ahead and run the um, run the data through the OpenSTV software to determine the winner, and I'll be sending that to you via email for you to ratify so we can make the public announcement on 25 March. Any questions about that? Easy peasy. All right. Awesome. All right. Next up is uh, updates from the uh, Drupal.org working group. Um, it's the content working group, the software working group. And the infrastructure working group. We're going to get three quick updates. Sorry, did I not say that? <clears throat> um, so we're going to get updates. Um, and then let's save all the questions in to the end. <clears throat> um, so. Okay, well, the format's going to be a little bit yeah. different. The format's going to be a little bit different today uh, due to uh, coming off of uh, basically being the first quarter of the year. Uh, not all the working groups were ever able to meet multiple times um, and uh, prior to this meeting. And so what we're doing is we're actually combining it uh, as a kind of a single update from all the working groups. And George and I are going to tag team this so that um, everybody gets uh, a, a little bit of staff and a little bit of uh, working group participation here. So uh, this is the current working group breakdown, uh, just as a reminder to everyone who sits on which working group. And uh, as a kind of a quick review of what was done in the last quarter, one of the, the big priorities in the last quarter was to take a look at charters and go through those and do some reviews and recommendations. Uh, we'll go that, through that in a little bit more detail here in a few slides. Uh, we also had our uh, second quarterly working group meeting, uh, and that was a, a, a very very uh, successful meeting. We were able to review the content model from the content strategy project. 
Um, and more information from that is going to be shared here in the next couple of weeks. But um, it was it was a good opportunity to get great feedback from a variety of working groups. Um, and then we also did a little bit of pre-planning in that meeting to talk about what we want to do during our uh, DrupalCon Los Angeles working group half day. So we, when we have that face-to-face -face time, being able to take as much um, to get as much out of it as possible. So the quarterly working group meeting. Uh, one of the things that came out of that that we we talked a bit about was that. Um, we really need to communicate and prioritize possibly with all the working groups. Uh, we invited uh, the documentation working group and the technical working group to the, the February all working groups meeting. Uh, we had representation from the technical working group uh, there. Uh, we also have representation from the community working group in the form of members that are on the co uh, content working group and on the software working group. Um, and we talked a little bit about how really we should probably include the, the security working group in that invite as well because it's, if, if we're really going to hit the group of advisors who can give us the, the best input about the features that we're going to prioritize, we really need to extend it out to this larger group. Um, part of this came from kind of a conversation of when I started, uh, the scope was to, to strictly work with the Drupal.org working groups. And what we've seen in practice is that uh, I've actually created a, uh, a bit of a rift um, between some of the working groups who, who didn't have an opportunity to feel involved. Um, so one of the steps that we've taken uh, is we've uh, intentionally reached out and I, myself and Tatiana have been attending the documentation working group to hear their needs and integrate that into the priority, prioritization process. Um, it's not too late, but there, there was definitely um, some hard feelings around how long it took to bring them into that, uh, uh, to that conversation. And one of the things that was a, a clear takeaway from this is that the content strategy project as a whole would have benefited from earlier involvement, particularly from the documentation working group. This is what I get for letting Holly run the mouse while I run oh, the keyboard. Sure, blame me. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like five feet away from me. Even my long arms couldn't reach. That just explained our entire working relationship. <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, whenever the uh, the gov when the working groups were put together and that governance was presented, uh, this was kind of the, the original layout. And George, you were going to talk to this a little bit and kind of talk about some of the background of why uh, it was structured. Yeah, a little bit. So um, so thanks, Josh. Um, you know, so Josh asked me to help uh, present these next few slides. Um, you know, as someone who serves on on both the content and community working groups, um, you know, I can provide a little bit of background and context, which you know many of you will already be familiar with. Um, but basically, the current governance model goes back uh, to this uh, some of the sprints that Dries led back in uh, 2012, and out of uh, that those sprints came. Uh, proposal for two sets of working groups, uh, one set um, that derive their authority directly from Dries, uh, and one set that uh, derives its authority from the uh, Drupal Association Board. Uh, so the uh, specifically the three Drupal.org working groups were chartered in 2013, um, and uh, you know that's the software working group, the content working group, and the infrastructure working group. And their goal was to collectively serve as uh, the product owner for Drupal.org until we were able to uh, hire a full-time CTO. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, uh, you know you'll see that um, you know as it plays out, there are some uh, you know shared responsibilities between the different groups, um, even though uh, for the most part the charters have been written in such a way uh, that kind of precludes that. So um, you know, for example, uh, as as the uh, the chair of the content working group, uh, you know, it specifically says in our charter that uh, you know we're not responsible for anything that's documentation, and we're not responsible uh, for uh, for driving marketing. Uh, the reality is that um, the work that we do in the content working group absolutely touches on those areas because we are uh, responsible for the overall content strategy uh, and uh, you know an experience of, uh, of Drupal.org which uh, includes uh, documentation and marketing within it. 
And so that's always been a little bit of a tension uh, with the current model. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, you can see a similar issue with um, uh, particularly the infrastructure and, and security working groups. I'm not as personally familiar with these, um, you know, but also as well with, uh, you know, software group, uh, and technical working group, basically having to do with the different kinds of, uh, of developer tools and features that are available on Drupal.org and, um, you know, and, and these different groups, even though they have separated responsibilities, uh, do have uh, a, kind of a common stake in the outcome of some of these efforts. Um, so if we want to skip to the next slide then. Um, so here we are now. Uh, we're two years later. Uh, we now have a CTO who has uh, been on the job for about a year now, and it is time to revisit things. Um, so big item number one, of course, is making sure that there's better communication and coordination between all the groups. Uh, so as Josh said, starting this year, we've been having quarterly meetings. Uh, the plan is to have two of those in person at DrupalCon, uh, two of which will be uh, via video. Uh, we also now have an all-groups listserv uh, that we're, uh, where we're able to share what we're working on with each other and keep everyone in the loop. Um, you know, there's some other things that have been going on as well. Um, obviously, Josh uh, uh, has been uh, present at, um, well, he's been present at all the, all the content working group meetings, and I'm sure other uh, working groups as well. Uh, you know, Tatiana also serves on all three of the Drupal.org working groups. And so there's, um, you know, a, a fair amount of staff involvement and coordination um, with that uh, respect. Um, and then um, we also, all the working groups also participated uh, in the process for uh, kind of helping put together the prioritized list of features, uh, that, that roadmap for Drupal.org. Um, I think, you know, that process probably needs a little bit more refinement, uh, but it is definitely an opportunity for all of us to uh, work together and, and sort of validate that uh, we're all on the same page. Uh, and then I know there's also been some uh, work that the software working group has been doing uh, to kind of streamline uh, their process as well. And I can uh, kind of go over that in summary. The, the software working group has merged its leadership teams. We used to have a uh, community tools leadership team, uh, developer tools leadership team, um, and then a localization leadership team. And what we were finding is, one, it was very challenging to get all the meetings scheduled because uh, that was a lot of additional meetings where there was a lot of overlap. Um, and many times the, the people that were participating were participating because they had a particular uh, community initiative or uh, maybe even a strategic initiative that staff was working on that they were focused on. Um, rather than getting updates for all of those projects, uh, they were more interested in just having a, a good way to communicate. And so one of the steps that we've taken uh, is we've kind of pulled them all together into a list of advisors, and we're going to start uh, using them as part of our notification whenever we have a particular feature that we really want feedback uh, from, a, from a group of um, active community members who have been involved in these discussions over time. Mm -hmm. So um, if we want to move then to the next slide, um, you know, the other thing that we've been uh, working on uh, in the working groups, uh, the Drupal.org working group specifically, is updating our charters uh, to better reflect the real world uh, role that we play in terms of our uh, interactions with uh, the CTO and the uh, uh, DA staff. And the way that process worked is that uh, each working group uh, got together, met, uh, we suggested uh, our own changes, and then we worked with uh, the staff to make sure uh, that the charters were as consistent as possible and, and made the most sense. Um, and so the biggest um, kind of change overall um, is that instead of uh, as in the, the previous iteration of the charters being directly responsible for execution on our various areas of jurisdiction, we now serve more as of a, a community advisory role, helping provide Josh and the staff with the context uh, and the expertise and just that kind of community experience that's necessary uh, to make sure that um, 
staff is executing on various initiatives in a way that not only meet the, pro the needs of the project, um, but are also consistent with the values and expectations of the community. And um, yeah, and that's that's my bit. Uh, for next steps on the charters, uh, one of the requests that we're making to the board is that uh, you review them between now and the next uh, uh, next board meeting. Uh, if you provide us feedback during that time, we'll work with the working groups during our next working group meetings to uh, incorporate that feedback, and then uh, we'll put them forward for a vote in the uh, the next board meeting. And you want that feedback as comments in the documents? Comments in the documents would be great. Um, one last bit of update from the uh, the working groups, and this comes out of the strategic initiatives that I, I've talked about a lot of times at this point. Um, what we've realized is that uh, we've actually had a little bit of, I won't call it scope creep, but uh, I will call it an expansion of really what we are working on and wanting to recognize that. So we're going to be updating the roadmap to, to kind of show this expansion and to describe it a little bit more. Uh, one thing that has definitely taken up more time than uh, we had originally planned was Drupal events. Uh, I will say, though, I think we've got a registration process that may be one of the best conference registration processes out there. Um, it's, it's really huge improvements. Also, the design is phenomenal on the LA site. If you haven't had a chance, please do take a look at it. Um, the content strategy and design project um, we originally called this the responsive redesign of Drupal.org, and, and really we're, we're incorporating our content strategy work and, and the ongoing work that we're going to be doing from the design system. And this is bigger than uh, we can really represent in a single initiative, so this will likely be broken out into some smaller initiatives as we go. Uh, and we're going to need the working group's help in prioritizing those and making sure that the content strategy work that we're doing is, is you know, being influenced by all the working groups. Um, we also were recognizing that infrastructure stabilization has uh, taken on a, a huge role in our work. Um, I, it's not certainly not as a percentage of our time. This has not been huge, but as an importance, um, it's something that is ongoing. Uh, we're trying to, whenever possible, give ourselves independence from the uh, OSL services, and that's so that we have the most flexibility in, in where we host any given service. So a good example of this would be the migration of um, migration off of mailman mailing list to the MailChimp uh, newsletter service. We can get a better quality of service, better reporting. Um, we've, we've done similar things in terms of uh, doing some of our own independent monitoring, uh, which has given us more options for tracking things in our infrastructure and making sure that our services are stable. Um, and also in things like the CDN and, and the recent uh, move of the FTP infrastructure over onto a CDN as well. All of that is is giving us a more stable, uh, more independent uh, platform that we can we can tweak and make perform the way we want. Uh, Drupal CI, uh, which was definitely a community initiative in our previous prioritization, uh, it's been requested that staff help in getting this over the finish line so that we can get it out of the way as a Drupal 8 blocker. Uh, so that's definitely worked into our plate, and we've got an upcoming sprint on that uh, actually just two weeks away. Um, Localized.drupal.org has also been something that was a community initiative, and uh, Gabor and Sebastian have actually asked for some help in getting that across the finish line. Uh, so we're in the next month or so, we're going to be applying some staff time uh, to help finish that upgrade because it is also a Drupal 8 blocker, and so it's it's critical that we we get involved in that. Um, and then one of the things that we we had on the list but is definitely changing is the update of Drupal groups. Uh, the content strategy is going to end up affecting this. So we're trying to pull together in the next month um, a group of um, longtime maintainers and or community members that have been participating in Drupal groups uh, that can help us make some decisions about the, the ways that we want to change the content structure of Drupal groups to make it uh, a better place for our user groups and our local, our, our local user groups and our interest groups going forward. And that is the summary. Looks like we have one comment. My comment that I put in? That is yours, Dries. Go for it. No. Right. Sorry, I can see. Um, you can actually, I can see the questions, but um, <clears throat> so we have about eight minutes left for discussion, if we want. Uh, I just, I was just going to throw out that you know when we created these charters, I mean we kind of did them all six 
loop over you know many months. So it's not, it's not unlikely that we didn't think in, and that we find these you know that things in practice may not always work as smooth as they could be working. Like some of the recent challenges, I guess, around related working groups or content related working groups. And by that I mean the documentation working group, the D to do content working group, and the marketing working group. So um, not entirely surprising, I guess, that these things may not, um, you know, may not work perfectly. Uh, and so, you know, more than happy to revisit these things as well. Like, even if there was more dramatic proposals, so to speak, in, in terms of how we um, divide things differently or how these working groups work together or maybe potentially merge these working groups. I, I, don't, I don't know what the solutions are. Um, all I wanted to throw out there is that we can think differently about them and make more radical changes if that is what we believe is useful. So that's my comment. And, um, yeah, no, thanks, Reese. Yeah, we definitely, um, I, you know, speaking again strictly for the process that we went through in the uh, in the content working group, um, we actually did when we, you know, uh, got the heads up that uh, you know we should probably go back and and revisit our charters now that you know the landscape had changed, um, which is, you know, uh, you know, uh, welcome for us. Uh, we did um, uh, go back and uh, we had a, a couple of of you know, private meetings that, that the staff didn't participate in and, uh, you know, and, and some offline communication where uh, we sat down and said, okay, let's, you know, let's think about this really seriously and, and what, um, what changes we might want to make. And, um, you know, and, and where we ended up coming to is, is where we're at. Um, so I think the nice thing about uh, these at least our charter changes that I, I feel like it gives us a little bit more flexibility uh, that we're not quite as um, uh, our role is is not as strictly defined uh, as it was before. Uh, so, for example, we um, uh, in the in the current version of the charter, uh, we're supposed to come up with we are responsible for every single policy uh, that's applied on Drupal.org. And, um, and and that actually is pretty time consuming <laughs> and it was uh, something that ended up being a, a distraction for us from our kind of larger strategic goals and uh, you know and we and now as a more advisory group uh, you know we can certainly review and advise on strategy and that sort of thing but we're not responsible for drafting it uh, which means that we can take you know more time to focus on a uh, bigger picture, bigger impact initiatives. Awesome. Well, thanks for um, you know, you know, well, thanks for the leadership there, and and you know, getting people together. Um, so that that's good to know. I'm really excited uh, about the quarterly working groups going forward and bringing in the other working groups to have a voice. I think. Uh, I, we're, we're not at the point that those working groups, I think, necessarily need to go through the same charter revision process, but uh, it will definitely give them a seat at the table and helping prioritize the work uh, that staff is able to spend time on. And I think that that act of letting them um, have a voice and letting them get heard is, is going to be much more healthy going forward. So um, even without changing any real structure, I think it's it's a it's a positive step. And. It, it makes it easier for me to communicate change as well because uh, it, we can go faster if I have a, a clear list of people that I know if I have their feedback, then I kind of have a go ahead to, to work forward. Awesome. And are you guys going to, um, how are we, are you going to submit updated charters for us to review? Is that? Um, oh, yeah. next? In this slide deck, if uh, if you move back to the Drupal.org working group charters, those uh, those three are links uh, that take you to the software working group, the content working group, and the infrastructure working group charters. You will notice that they are written very similarly, which is uh, kind of awesome given that they were actually written separately. 
Um, we, we helped compile them, so I, I won't say that there wasn't you know, some wordsmithing in, in that process, but uh, I, I think all the working groups came to very similar conclusions without, um, without, without a lot of difficulty. So um, it, there's, there's some definite themes that go through all three of those that are very similar. I will send direct links those, to those out to the board list as well, so you guys don't have to go digging for them later. Awesome. All right, well, um, we're kind of out of time. We, we had an eight-minute delay in the beginning. Um, but um, I'll say one other quick thing. There's an email thread for the different board members um, around, um, you know, we have to take a vote on, um, where is it again? I think um, it's the revising the charter to reflect the, um, the term limits. Correct. Thank you. Um, so we're, we'll do that vote in email. You know, a number of us have already voted. So just this is just a reminder to check your email and to vote. Um, all right. Well, um, is there any other you know general questions? If, if not, um, we can um, adjourn and um, move on to the executive session. See you guys there. Thank you. All right, thank you.